Yes. Mom? What? Are you going to be much longer? Why? Well, I'm doing work soon. I want to give my hair a quick wash. God, can I have a bath in peace? Just for once. Yeah, of course you can. God, I'm sorry for breathing. I'm just going into work. All oh, right. Any news on Terry? What do you care, eh? Any joy? Nah, the busy's had sod all to say. I've been round all the hospitals. If they know anything, they're not saying anything to me. Well, he's got to be somewhere. Huh? Yeah, but where? Uh, swallowed up in the system, I wouldn't wonder. Getting shunted from pillar to post. I hope to God he's all right. You coming into the restaurant today? I don't know. Oh, well, best be off. Look. Why don't you go and wash up a few plates or something, get your mind off things. I'll hold the fool here. I could try bringing some of my hospital cronies, see if they can track him down. What do you think? Someone else's problem, I think, old son. Yeah, well, makes a change, doesn't it? Cancel your cab, then. I'll run you into work. Girls, what have you two been up to? Jackie, oh, what happened? I'm being robbed. I took the CD, the telly, the lock. Oh, you poor things. Come on in. Go on, Ice. Fine, thanks. Are you skiving? Christmas shopping day, actually. Not that we've got any money to spend. Ah, well, you never know what Santa might have in his sack for you. That's right. Where's your mum? She just got the longest bath in history. You what? She's in a right mood. I don't know what's up with her. I do. It's you packing college in. Rachel. You what? She's going to be a full-time spud peeler at Barry Grant's calf. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Thank you, big mouth. Oh, come on, tell us it's a wind-up. Afraid not. Why? More money. Oh, well, there was no need. And how'd you work that one out? Well, have you talked it over with your teachers? Yeah, I've discussed it all. They said I don't have to confirm anything till after Christmas. Right, well, hang fire until then. Yeah, we might win the pools. Hey, I'm serious. Look, don't do anything daft, please. Look, I've weighed up all my options and this really is my best choice. Yeah, you might think that now. And what's going to change? Well, I don't know. Maybe Rachel's right. You could touch for eight gorgeous. Yeah, and we could go and collect the cheque on the flying pig that's just landed in the back garden. <sighs> all right, all right. Well, all I'm saying is just don't burn all your bridges. Oh, he's as mad as my mum. Oh. Right, I'm off. Where are you going? Out. Town. Who with? Lee and Gary. When are you back? I don't know. Well, one hour, two hours. Oh, tea time, I suppose. Right. Go on. Hi, yeah. Hello. Uh, how are you, Ellie? How are you feeling? Sorry? You know, the migraine. Oh, oh, it comes and goes. I'm gonna go and wash my hair. Are you in college all day? No, Mum, I'm in work. Oh, Beth! Mum, please, not now. I'm not in the mood, OK? And don't bother making me any tea, because I won't be back till late. Did you call round for anything in particular? No, just a social call, you know, just before I start me round. Oh, are you in work all day? Yeah. I'll uh, go and put the kettle on, shall I? OK. I'll, um, I'll go and get dressed. Have you any idea who did it? Well, does this lad in the flat above us? Yeah, we showed he's a smackhead. He looks out of a skull half the time. Oh, he's mumbling some hippie crap or other. We reckon it was him. Have you told the police? Well, we can't prove it, can we? And the stuff will be well flogged by now. Can't you tell the landlord this fella's on drugs? He couldn't give a toss as long as he coughs his rent up. So what are you going to do? Well, we're certainly not going back there for the mm. stars. Well, you've always got a couple of beds here. Mm. Thanks, Mum, but... Well, we thought we'd try and find another place. Well, of course. You don't want to let one bad dude put you off, do you? Yeah, well, we've got a few places in mind, haven't we? Yeah, we'll ask around, see what the score is. Well, if you have no luck, you can always come here. Yeah, Mrs Dixon. Oh, thanks. 
Mum. Yes. You don't mind, do you? Mind what? Well, me and Katie are looking for another flat. As if. Why should I? It's... Well, it's not that I don't want to live here with you. It's just we've... We've got used to being... Free? <laughs> well, not free exactly. But it's nice to do your own thing. Well, yeah. I wouldn't put the mockers on your freedom if you were here, you know. Oh, I know. But it just wouldn't be the same. That's my problem as well. What? Nothing seems the same. You're gone. Your dad's gone. Tony's gone. Mike's never here. I mean, he got his sweaty socks as company. Oh, Mum, just cos I don't live here doesn't mean I don't love you or anything. I oh, know. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got nothing to be sorry for. Oh, you look nice. Do I? Yeah, I like that dress. Oh, uh, not that fussy on it myself. You will. I think I'm going to put something else on. Why? Because I feel like it. Oh, don't be daft. Come and drink your tea. Yeah, in a minute. Oh, good. Has she been like this all morning? Mm, you're getting the treatment now, are you? Oh, she's wound up like no-one's business. I think that's my fault. Yeah, that McGuire's due to collect today, though, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, can't be doing that any good having him lurking in the background. No. Mm. He calls around a little bit too often for my liking. What do you mean? Sometimes I wonder if there's more to it than money. <laughs> you don't think Mum would give him a second look, do you? Oh, as if. But I don't know, it doesn't stop him coming around on the sniff, though, does it? Oh, where'd you get that thing from? What's wrong with it? It's ancient. So, it's comfortable. <laughs> You've turned me sin bad right off wearing things like that. Look, will you change the record, please? You're giving me a headache. Oh. Are you all right? Uh, is this all right? Bloody migraine starting off again. I think I better go and lie down and you'll show Sinbad out, won't you, Beth? Yeah. Thanks. Well, I've got windows to clean anyway. See ya. See ya. Oh, Barry. What? I found Terry. Is he all right? He's in good hands. Where is he? Fallows Hall. He was admitted last night. What, that loony bed? It's the best psychiatric hospital in the area. Well, I don't care. I can't leave him there. You haven't much choice, I'm afraid. Well, why? Unfortunately, he was considered to be a danger to himself and to others. He's been sectioned. You were? I did manage to have a quiet word with one of the doctors. And? They think he's suffering from acute depression. Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Sounds about right to me. All the signs do point in that direction. So what are they saying? Is having some kind of breakdown? In layman's terms, yes. So what are they going to do about it? Well, the doctors weren't giving too much away, but uh, counselling and therapy were mentioned. What, you mean going to try and brainwash him like that Simon no, tried no, to no, do? No, no, Just try and help him out of it, that's all. Oh, God. The hospital really is the best place for him. Oh, and you'd know, would you? Penny's right. He'll be able to get proper treatment now. He would have been all right with me. I think we're best leaving it to the experts. But some blades in a white coat who doesn't know him from Adam. I'm the expert on Terry. I know what he needs. I've got to get him out of there. You can't. Look, I did it before. I got him out the last hospital, didn't it's I? It's not your responsibility anymore. Look, I don't care. I've got to go and get him out. What? Look, it's my fault he's in there in the first place. I'm telling you. Come on, man. You're not making sense. I've got to go and see him. Where do you go? Where do you think? For God's sake, stop him. Barry! Would that them new footy boots a boss? Yeah, they're a boss price and all. Can I have them then? We'll see. Go crazy shopping then, are you? How did you guess? Hey, look, how did it go with the building society? Oh, like a dream. All I've got to do now is wait to get the survey done on the slide. I want away. And then it's uh, Happy Christmas Monday, eh? Hey, Mick. Yeah. Hey, have you returned to your flat yet? Uh, no one. Oh, well, I thought you'd bought a new house. Well, yeah, I have, but, um... So, are you moving out then? Um. We have to go to court first, don't you, Dad? Have you? Cheers, Lee. Well, what for? Does it matter? Well, you've been evicted or something? No, just cleaned out by some Robin get. So we're looking for a new flat. Thanks anyway. Yeah, good Sorry. luck with your court case. Thanks. Marianne? Hi. We're going to see for Christmas, you know. Oh, that's brilliant. She is, I'm not. Do you want to come to town with us? Oh, Marianne's too busy. Yeah, I only called by to pick up a few bits and pieces. All right, Dad. Can Marianne come to town with us? Well, don't ask me. It's up to her. Well, if it's okay with your dad, yeah, I'd love to come. Well, then, go in my car, eh?
going somewhere. What? The coat. Now, if you're thinking of nipping out to get us something to drink, don't bother. I got it covered. Can we just go? Ah, now we need to have a bit of a chat about that. Oh, where's your car? I came in a cab. Well, I didn't think you'd want the neighbours' nets twitching all afternoon. You got a corkscrew? What are you doing? Cracking open the vino. I don't want to drink. I just want to go and get this over with. <sighs> Bit of a problem on that score, I'm afraid. Aha. Why? You look nice. Why? <sighs> it's me mother. She promised me faithfully she'd be out all day. And now the little tinker's gone and invited a friend round for tea and scones. So, what does that mean? <sighs> well... I know it's a bit cheeky of me, but I was thinking that we uh, might have our little party here instead. I can't for the life of me imagine what you think this is going to achieve. Well, dear, must be up here. Promise me you'll at least talk to a doctor before you dive in at the deep end. The first and only thing I'm going to do is make sure Teddy's all right. Wait. Oh, come on. Where? I don't know. You can't search every warden office in the place. Why not? He's probably in the middle of some treatment or other. So? He mightn't be in any fit state to leave. He shouldn't be in here in the first place. Are you sure of that? Yeah, I am. He's in the state of the bloody place. Put them away, Leo. They're for Christmas. Why are you having a nose? Away now. I don't know. Eighty pounds for football boots. I threw all the fuss over the training shoes. It might be the last chance I had to buy them anything for a couple of years. We have to go to the grotto, Dad. Yeah? But it's for kids. Oh, I've got your boots now, have you? Do it for Gemma. She doesn't want to go on her own. <laughs> All right, Leo. I want to see Santa. Don't show up your TV. Hey, come on, you lot. You could have just written to me in Greenland, you know. <laughs> Dad. Yeah, I suppose you want to get off with your mates now, do you? Please. Mm. Dad. What, babe? What will Leo want? From Santa for Christmas. Well, ask him. Yes. Hey, Leo. Gemma wants to know what you want of Santa for Crimble. Just write your own. That's all. Teddy, what have they done to you, eh? What have they done to him? He's under sedation, that's all. He's drugged up to the eyeballs. God alone knows what state he was in when he arrived here. They probably had no choice. But he's like a zombie. This is what he needs, Barry. It's proper treatment. Oh, you call proper treatment just staying out of telly, do you? It's only part of what they do. Look, let's get him out of here. You can't. Just watch me. Are you mad? He's been sectioned. Look, are you going to help me or what? I haven't touched your wine, sweetheart. Why don't you relax? What's the problem? If you think for one second that I'd, I'd do anything in this place, you must be mad. You're worrying yourself over nothing. Look, let's think this through. You're worried about the girls coming back, right? So, where's Beth? What's that got to do with you? I'm only asking. She's working. Skivvying, because she thinks she's got to pay you off. And she'll be back when? I don't know, later on tonight. And Rachel? Town. Till? Tea time. So, the coast's clear. I don't care. But we've got the place to ourselves. I can't, not here. Why not? Because this is our home. Oh. Mandy, you've got to live for the moment. I swear by that motto. I mean, tomorrow? I don't know. Maybe the fun will have gone out of our little plan. Maybe I won't be in the mood anymore. Then where will you be? Right back where you started. Up to your eyes in it. Now, I'm going to go upstairs and lie down. And if you want to join me, well, it'll be lovely.
I'm sorry. I can't be a party to this any longer. Don't do this to me, eh? Come on, Barry. Let's take him back. Away. Come on, sir. Teddy, come on. All right. All right. Come on. Thanks. Come on. Not far to go, sir. Not far to go now. No makeup. I like that. You nervous? There's no need to be. Because I've taken care of everything. Need a bit of help? No. Shh. It's probably Jehovah's Witnesses. I'll, I'll do it myself. I like tea. I like girls. Straight of him, doing Mandy's windows again. What do you mean, again? Oh, come off it. She gets a better service than the rest of us put together. Well, you know what they say, love is blind. <laughs> come on, get him on the couch. This is a criminal offence, you know. Well, don't flap. I won't grass you up. Where's he gonna stay? Him? I don't know. We can't take him back to the flat, can we? That's first place to look. And I can't see Penny or Jean rolling up the red carpet. I'll have to think about it. Who the hell's that now? Door. Anyone at home? Yeah? Sorry to bother you. We thought we saw you coming in. What's bothered? I was wondering if you could do us a favour. Is it important? Well, only if you're bothered about helping two homeless teenagers. Hey? The thing is, I believe you sort of promised the girls here a flat if any came up. Did I? Well, not exactly promised. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm a bit busy here, if you know what I mean. All we need to know if you've got any flats free. What I thought you two had a gaff already. We are, but... It was full of drug addicts. They've had all the stuff stolen and everything. All right, well, what about the flat above the salon? Well, I thought that was Teddy's. Yeah, it was, but uh, he won't be needing it anymore. Oh? So, do you want it or not? Oh, yeah, sound. Right, I'll give you the shout, then, eh? Well, that was easy enough, wasn't it? Oh, not at all. Brilliant, eh? <laughs> Ah, look, I, I really ought to be going. Yeah, um, is there anything I should do when these drugs wear off? Hard to say. You'll have to play it by ear, I'm afraid. I fair enough. Barry, I wish you... Look, we'll be all right. All right. Thanks, David. Shopping then. I haven't got any money. Have you said anything about money? Rachel? Shut up, you women. Get off you, that you. Did you just nick that? Oh, quick, isn't it? Put it back, you dickhead. Dream on. Leo's right, you're gonna get us all arrested. Oh, as if. Leo, go and look at those handbags. Why? To distract the woman. Why do you think? I don't want to distract the woman. Just do it.
Leo. Oh, God. I'll give it toes. What? Come in. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Where's the rest of the gang? I don't know, I was just looking for them. I hope you haven't been acting the goat. I haven't, honest. All right, well, you might as well stick with us. We're heading home now. Okay. Come on, then. Just polishing off the wine before I go. You don't mind, do you? Get out. Anything you say. Look, you got what you wanted. Now get out. I thought we both got what we wanted. Goodbye, Mr. Maguire. Au revoir, Mrs. Jordash. The Brookside magazine is out now in the shops full of features and profiles of the cast and it'll cost you £1.95. idea where she is. I haven't got a clue. Oh, I hope she's all right. We know the migraines and the... Mm. Oh, well. Tell her I called, all right? OK. Anybody in? Yeah? And you got a visitor? Oh, hello. What a nice surprise. Yeah. How are you feeling? Great, thanks. Are you putting the kettle on, Beth? Come on, where have you been? Well, you're not going to believe this. What? How would you feel if I said you don't have to pack in university? Look, we've talked about it. No, no, go on, go on. How would you feel? Well, great. And if I told you that we'd seen the last of that creep, Kenny Maguire? Mm, sounds good to me. How? And that we didn't owe anybody a bean. Mum, what are you talking about? <laughs> We're free, Beth. And it was so easy. Man, you're not making much sense, look. Oh, sorry. Um, I... Right, I, uh... I decided to go for a walk this morning. I was still feeling a bit fuzzy from that migraine and wanted to clear my head. Anyway, I, I walked for miles without even realising it, and uh, all of a sudden, I just felt absolutely shattered. And on top of that, it looked like it was going to pour down any minute. So there I was, you know, dying for a sit-down and a cup of tea, and I couldn't find a cafe to save my life. Anyway, I, uh, I passed this bingo hall. <sighs> I didn't even know they opened in the daytime. <laughs> Um, and by this stage, my head was just starting to split, so I thought, well, I'm bound to get a drink in here. So in I went. I mean, just for a cup of tea, nothing else. And anyway, I got my tea, and uh, 
just for something to do, I thought I'd watch the bingo. Well, I'd only been in there two minutes and someone won £500, just like that. The next thing is, it's a new game, and I thought, should I? I know we can't afford it, Beth, but the bad news is I spent our last five pounds on a game of bingo. <sighs> yeah, but the good news is I got a full house first go. I won. You serious? Well, I'm not making it up. Well, how much? Three thousand pounds. You what? Well, that's just like what we owe Kenny Maguire, isn't it? I know, I know. It's like fate or something. Well, where's the dosh, then? They gave me a cheque. Well, let's have a look, then. Well, I haven't got it. I had them make it out to Mr. K. Maguire. I mean, that's why I've been out so long, because I wanted to pay him off before anything else could go wrong, so I went straight round to his and handed it over. Because <laughs> she was in his face, pig sick he was. So that's it, no more Kenny Maguire? No more Kenny Maguire, no more debts, no more nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these decorations are gorgeous, Pat. Yeah, they're cute, aren't they? How much do they cost, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, £2.50. No, hey, that's not bad, that. You get a good dozen in a bag. Each? Bloody hell. Just have money to burn. That tree's looking absolutely splendid. Yeah, thanks for all your help. That's the least we could do. Yeah, you must be rushed off your feet, what with the pantomime and everything, though. Oh, panic not. Cecil B. DeMille here has it all in hand. Well, how's it all going, then? Early days yet, but no hiccup so far. Who's doing what? Well, your father's producing and directing and writing the script. <laughs> Dad, I hope you're not hugging all the top jobs. Of course not. And so what's Mum's role in the scheme of things, then? She's... she's my girl Friday. Oh, I'm indispensable, you know. Her club, not yours. Quite. And by concentrating on the more creative aspects of our little extravaganza, I'm giving your mother a free hand to ensure the smooth running of all the administrative aspects of the production. Oh, don't worry. I have been assigned the mammoth task of coming up with a title for our little epic. Have you had any inspiration? Hardly. What was your best ever to date? Uh, dick in boots. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these things take time. Well, we better get a move on. There's all the publicity to think about. What about Pensioner's Panto Paradise? Mm. I'm not a pensioner for a start. <laughs> Dick and the Beanstalk? Mm. Could we just leave Dick out of it for the moment? Oh, come on, think. Here you are. I've got an idea. How about Bing Crosby's Christmas Cracker? Do you know, Beverly? I rather like the sound of that. Here you go. Thanks. Oh. So, Mr. Moneybags, which bingo hall was it then? Sorry. Well, if winning's that easy, I think I might have a go on it myself. God, you know, um. I can't remember the name of it now. Whereabouts was it? Oh, it was a couple of miles up the road. Oh, by the baths? That's right. I know, yeah, at the, uh, the Gormans. That's it, yeah. Where are you going now? You've only just got back. Um, Simrad, could you do me a favour? Yeah. Can you lend me twenty pounds? Oh, what is it now? Well, I'm bandits to show you, is it? <laughs> no, I just uh, I want to get my hair done, you know, celebrate my win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't get paid till next week. Oh, God, she just touches for three grand and she's still scrounging off me. It will be the last time, honest. Well, they do say that this kind of luck comes in threes, you know. Oh, do they? Yep. Oh, well, we've got two lots left now. No, you've got one. You won the bingo. She meant me. <laughs> and uh, well, who knows what the third will be. Yeah. Well, I was born lucky, I was. Did you get enough? Yeah. Well, I only came to pick this lot up, didn't I? Yeah. You glad I stayed over? You know I am. Me too. Good. I hate being away from you. Then why don't you stick around? Because I've got a house to go to. Don't let me forget about the house and stay here, just for a bit. What would the point of that be? We'd be together. We should be together in our new house. We're gonna have to start facing a few facts, Mick. Like what? Well, like we can't afford the mortgage as well as the rent on the flat. It's gotta be one or the other. Yeah, I know. So what's it gonna be? Because if you're gonna stay here, we're gonna have to put the house up for sale. What? What choice have we got? <sighs> uh, no, I suppose. So? Think about it. Okay. But get a move on. Please. Hello. All right. So, uh, how did your hospital visit go? You don't really want to know, do you? As a matter of fact, I do, yes. Seeing as I've had the police at the house giving me the third degree. You what? 
I've had a right grilling because of you and your missing mate. Well, what did you tell him? You're in it up to your neck. So I would tell he's done a bunk, so what? It's nothing to do with me. Oh, come off it. Why have you been hiding out here all night, then? I'm telling you. Oh, really? Hello, Terry. How are you feeling? What are you doing up? Must have been some kid, that, eh? So, this is what's best for him, is it? Wandering around a nightclub in his gym jams. Just bought it, eh? What now, then? Look here, why don't you go and have a kip on the couch for an hour? I've got a surprise for you after. Go on, sir. Look, uh, I'm sorry you got dragged into all of this. Me too. Won't be a problem much longer, though. No? No. How do you work that out? I'm getting them out of the country. What? I found Oscar in Spain. His missus is a retired nurse. She's going to look after him over there. So a bit of sun, a bit of rest, he'll be all right. Just like that, eh? He's flying out to Savvy, so if the busy's come round asking questions again, keep stomach. Aye, aye, Skipper. Right. I'd better go and get his gear together, eh? Can I just ask you something first? Why? Why what? All this. Risking your neck, putting me, the business, everything you've got on the line. I mean, I know you're bosom buddies and you go back a hell of a long way, blah de blah but I don't get it. I'll tell you when you're 21, eh? Sit down and kick. Finished. Ah, oh, thanks. No bother. Looks great. Better than the minty old plastic effort I've got at home. Mm, I just wanted Christmas to be really special this year, you know, with Alice and everything. <laughs> Me too. It's Josh's birthday, Christmas Day. And Ron's. Oh, of course. Mad, isn't it? This time last year, he was a screaming blob of puke and snot, and now he can talk. And as for Josh. <laughs> Yeah, it is mad. Hey, hang on. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Right then, better get my skates on. I've got an audition to get to. <laughs> Hiya, Mandy. I love your hair. You can't just... You've no right... We're finished. Oh, come on. Don't say that. Go to hell. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we could have some order, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please, some order. Thank you. Mr Lowe, when you're ready, thank you. Now, as we haven't actually got a script as such at the moment, what we've decided to do is to try and find out what each of you is capable of. And to that end, I've compiled a list of potential... Have I missed anything? As I call no, it, the fun is just about to begin. No one nabbed the star path, then. Oh, why? Oh, you thinking uh, of her about it? Um, Not half. I'll be up on that stage, snogging the gob off some prince if a bloody kills me. <laughs> Mrs. Audrey Manners. <laughs> You shouldn't have much competition there. Hope you don't think I'm following you or anything. What do you want? Well, I was just passing and there you were. Well, will you leave me alone? Glad to see things are getting back to normal, that so you can afford a hairdo. Would have been a miserable Christmas, things being left the way they were. Well, now it won't be, so... So it was worth it then, cos I tell you, I thought so. Please. It's really wet my appetite, that spot of afternoon delight. What? I think next time I'll take you somewhere a bit classy. Somewhere where you don't have to hide from the window cleaner. Next time? Yeah, a little country hotel or something. No, there isn't going to be a next time. Hey? That was it. We had a deal. 
We still have. No, that was it once. Surely you don't think that was it? It was. We agreed. Mandy, sweetheart, I think you're lovely and I'm very fond of you. But be realistic. Three thousand pounds for a quick romp. I mean, I think one of those supermodels had come cheaper than that. You, you can't do this to me. We've got a deal. Every time you and I get it together, that's another month's financial worries out the window. No, I'm going to get the police onto you. And tell them what? That you've been sleeping with me to get rid of your debts? But, but I've told Beth I've got rid of you. And how did you manage that? I said I'd won the bingo. Oh, oh, oh. What a fertile imagination you have. I'll have to see if we can put it to good use. Right then, I'll see you soon. Ciao. was happening. It was obvious. Hey, leave him alone, eh? I didn't know you it on the rub. Yeah, well, you will next time. I'm not doing it again. Are you crap, you? I thought your dad was some kind of big-armed robber. He's not. Don't be tight, Rach. Yeah, well, if you don't come again, you don't get a share of yesterday's stash. You only got a scarf. Nah, we stayed in town after that. Got all sorts. Where is it? My house. So, do you want your share or not? I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do with it anyway. Half it's rubbish. We'll hide it for now, we'll sell some of it, and then use the rest for Christmas presents. I ain't hiding any rob gear in mine. Me neither. Well, I can't hide it under my bed forever. Look, wherever we put it, someone's bound to find it. What are we going to do then? I know. We'll bury it. You're cracked, Jim. We're out back garden under the flags. My mum's at work. We can go and do it now if you like. Well, are you coming or what? Excuse me, Major. I was wondering what you thought of my performance. Oh, absolutely. Yee! I heard on the tin yard that you're um, putting a bit of a show on. You come to give us a turn? Wouldn't miss it for the world. Don't I know you? Uh, I don't think so. Julia Brogan, Audrey Mallis. That's it. Audrey um, Snodgrass. Lived in the flats at the back of us. Yes, well... Went to school with our Aggie. Oh, you're a funny little thing. Always picking your nose. Excuse me a moment. I must just um common as muck that one. Like this is my song. Right, let's get this shower organized. The moment I saw you, I wanted to get close to you. <sighs> so how long are we keeping it all in for? So we can find people to flog it to. Have you finished yet? Oh, do you want to go? You meant to be keeping Dixie, not moaning. <sighs> there are sorted. Right. You can fill it again now. Do you want to shovel the extra soil away while I put the flags back? Oh, OK. Someone's coming! Oh, God! <sighs> Mum, I thought you were at work. Um. Didn't feel well, couldn't face it. What's that? Uh, Lee and them call for us. You don't mind, do you? Are you okay? I, uh, I think I need to lie down. <sighs> Thank God for that. <sighs> Well, um, given Audrey's undoubted keyboard skills, I thought we'd make her musical director. So I'll be working closely behind the scenes with you, Major? In a manner of speaking. Well, I don't want to do any directing. I want a bit of romance, Major. Well, 
Given Beverly's undoubted uh, assets, uh, not to mention her singing voice, I've decided to cast her as the leading lady. Does that mean I get the hunk? Oh, yeah. Yes, charming. <laughs> Mr. Brennan will play the dame. And I suppose you'll be wanting me for the prince. Ah, well, uh, I had you penciled in for a rather more mature role, actually. Oh, what's that then, fairy godmother? I dear marked you as one of the ugly sisters. The ugly what? It's a splendid character role. Well, I've never been so insulted in my own life. Well, you can keep your panto. And I don't know what you're laughing at. <laughs> what a frightful woman. Oh, Lord. I'm afraid I've offended her artistic sensibilities. I don't think she had any to offend in the first place. Now, Major, alone at last. How was your meal the other night? Ah, uh, well, I think it would be fair to say it failed to go off with a bang. What a shame. Seeing all that good food go to waste. Yes, and um, I'm afraid my uh, starvation diet in certain areas continues. You should eat at my table one night. You might just get your appetite back. Where do we go? I told you twice. You'll get on our plane. Oscar's meeting you at the other end. Oh. Where do we go? Spain. To get you better to... Right. You come on with us, aren't you? Well, I can't. I've got things to do here. You're not coming. I wish I could, you'd tell me yet. If I'm not going, I'm not going. Well, Teddy, don't be... You've got to come. I can't. You've got to. Don't leave me. I'm not leaving you. Don't leave me. Look, they wouldn't let me on the plane. I haven't got my passport. Look, you can't leave me. You can have my passport. Please. All right, I won't leave you. Honest. Yeah. Come on. I better go and find a phone, mate. There you go, love. See you again. Hi, hi. There we go, really. I've got a bit of news. Is that good or bad? When I got home, there was a message on the answer phone from that firm in Glasgow. They still want me. So? What do you think? I take it you rang them and said you'd be up on the next train. No, I came to talk to you. I don't see why. The subject's closed. It's a good job, Mick. It's good money. It's only a couple of hours away. Well, what is it with you? I mean, one minute we're buying a house together, the next you want to go and live in Glasgow. One minute you're walking up the aisle with me, the next you want to get rid of me kids. Just what the bloody hell do you want? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you're not going to Glasgow, and that's it. Well, since when did you tell me what I could and couldn't do? Since when you said you'd marry me. You're unbelievable. Where are you going? Where are you going? Go with me. Oh, thank you, my darling. Manna from heaven. Are you starting to work on the script? No, no time like the present. Well, there's something I want to show you first. Oh, you got some plot suggestions? It's a will. Sorry? My will. But we made our wills years ago. This isn't quite the same. This is what I believe they call a living will. In the event of my becoming senile, I, Jean Cosmo. But what is this? It's what I want you to do for me should I ever be reduced to the state of a common or garden vegetable. But I couldn't possibly do... What, pull the plug on me? Why not? Jean, this is morbid. No, it's realistic. Terry Sullivan's stay here did me a favour. Made me think about my own mortality. But we've got years ahead of us yet. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I couldn't possibly carry out these instructions. No you prefer to leave me to linger, would you? Wedged into a bedpan and hooked up to a dozen drips. Anyway, to be a waste of a good hospital bed. No, Jean, but really... Life has been too sweet to want it to fade out to nothing. Anyway, I want to go out with a whimper. You're not ill, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. But as far as this is concerned, I am deadly serious. Here's Penny. 
I'd say we see four as I. You're coming back, aren't you? Of course I am, sir. Thanks for coming. Here are your things. It's uh, my passport in there. What the hell is going on? He won't go on his own. So you're off to Spain? Yeah, well, it looks that way. As a nursemaid? Someone's got to rub his factor 45 in for him, haven't they? How long will you be gone? Wish you knew. So what do you expect me to do in the meantime? Look after your house, run your restaurant? Look, it's only till I settle him in with Oscar and his missus. I'll only be gone a couple of weeks. Will you? I thought we had something going. We have. I thought you loved me. And I do. You said you wanted me to have your child. I mean, what if I was pregnant now? Would you still go scuttling off to sunny Spain? Me and not, I. Would you care? Look, I've got to go. Look, just tell me one thing. What the hell's Terry got that I haven't? No. Then stay. I can't. Look, I'll see you when I get back, eh? Oh, what's the point? You've made a fool of me. And I've had it up to here with feeling foolish. There are only two people you really care about. Yourself and your friend. The rest of us just don't figure. See you, Barry. Is Penny coming with us? Nah, she isn't, mate. It's just me and you. Me and you. I like that. The Channel 4 book, Brookside Life in the Close, is out now for £14.99. week. Punch drunk with Christmas shot. No, I've got that pleasure to come. Oh, don't bother, love. It's like a matter of down there. <laughs> oh, isn't she lovely, eh? Oh, just think it'll be her first Christmas. Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi, uh, just saying to Pat, be little Alice's first Christmas. Oh, yes, it will. Oh. We're looking forward to it, aren't we, Alice? Just the four of us. Oh. Um, what are you doing after school? I was just going back to my games kit. I forgot it. <laughs> Wait till she's his age. Bye-bye. Mm. <laughs> yeah. See you, love. <laughs> I hope she does have a good Christmas. It can't have been an easy year for them. No. Oh, you really feel for them, don't you? Alice must be a real handful. You know, Pat's mum was telling me. She has to have constant stimulation. You know, to get her going, keep her interested and curious, like. I suppose so. I'll have to see if I can get her a little something for Christmas. Oh, well. See you, Mum. Yeah, see you, Bye. What does she mean, stimulation? Um, well, it's, it's just that babies like Alice have to be kept interested in things, you know, helps them develop. Well, like with toys and stuff, you mean? Yeah, I suppose so. Sad, isn't it? Yeah, I feel just sorry for her. Feeling a bit jealous? Oh, don't be soft, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can tell. Why should I be? Because you haven't got your own place, because you're on the dole and still living well, with mum. Well, not for long. I'll soon have my own place. Oh, yeah. You cooking and washing. Look at the last time you left home in that squat. All right, Mike? Um, he's sulking. Jackie, will you give it a rest? Spain! We're days away from one of the busiest times of the year, and he goes off to Spain. It wasn't my decision, Max. I tried to stop him. Hey, what's all the shouting about him when he just got Alice off to sleep? 
Barry's gone off to Spain and left us in the lurch. I tried to persuade him, but he was insistent. He's taking Terry off to stay at Oscar Dean's. No mention of when he's coming back. And at Christmas of all times. I mean, what are people going to think? Remember the last time everyone thought he was in Spain? There were rumours of bankruptcy and embezzlement. It'll all start again, you know. People are rubbish as before we've even got off the ground. Well, push him out, then. He was quick enough to sack me the other week. Well, how can I do that? Well, tell him straight that you're not prepared to be in a partnership with someone who lets you do all the work. Ah, Katie. Just the girl I'm looking for. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Crosby. I can't help him. The flowers today. Me and Jackie are moving into the flat upstairs and I'm not busy. No, no, no. It's nothing to do with the shop. I'm after your services as a choreographer. What? Bing Crosby's Christmas Cracker. I'm sure you've heard all about it. Oh, yeah. Is that the film that's always on at Christmas? <laughs> no, not quite. It's the Over 55's Club Panto, which I'm producing. All proceeds to the Down Syndrome Association. You know that my new granddaughter has Downs. Oh, yeah, we know that. Well, we need someone to put us right on the choreography. Mrs. Crosby tells me that you're the expert. Right. I want to do some dance routines. Big, spectacular, Busby Barkley kind of things. Are you game? I'm only a student, you know. Well, then, just think of the experience. I imagine it'll go rather well on your CV when you make your debut as a professional. I know, but... Well, we're just carrying these boxes upstairs, Mrs. Crosby, so why don't you talk to Katie while we're doing that? Yes, yes, of course, why not? One good turn deserves another, eh? Nothing, Katie. Gary! All right. Where are you going? Not really. Do you fancy coming into town and bunking off? I got some money for the stuff I sold at school and I want to get my hair done. I hate it like this. We could do a bit of shopping, you know, our kind of shopping. Will you come with us? I kind of need to get away from me and me, Dad. It's dead depression, isn't it? What do you want to get, anyway? Some toys. Toys? What for? A special Christmas present for a little girl who lives by us. Oh, it's dead sad. She's got Down syndrome. Are you coming? I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, I'll just go and tell me that. I'm going to town. You go on. I'll catch it up. Ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. I hope you're not parking them reindeers there for long. Gone in half an hour, I promise. <laughs> What's it all in aid of? Well, it's the round table Christmas sleigh. It's this time of the year we start collecting for charity. How do I look? No oh, grace. But uh, our Father Christmas is usually bad. Oh. Do you think I should pad up? I hope he's not asking you to sit on his knee. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I was just going to ask him if I could tell him what I want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's my husband's annual time of year for making a fool of himself. Uh, all in a good cause. Yeah, well, don't forget to call it ours for a donation. Every penny counts for your little Alice. Okay, so I'll see you. Bye-bye. Why does everybody assume we're collecting for Alice? We're not some charity case. No, oh, Dad was just the same. Well, I suppose Father Christmas is too busy to turn up at the restaurant this evening. Oh, well, I, I did promise the table I would be available this evening. Yeah. I was wondering, do you remember the guy we saw for the sous chef's job? Yeah, Barry decided he wasn't right, so we didn't hire him. Well, with your newfound powers, I thought you might like to re-interview him, you know, reconsider his application. Without Barry? Why not? Well, it's just a little awkward tonight. Maybe we could fix it tomorrow. Or perhaps you could use these newfound powers to delegate the job to Penny. Oh, right, yes, um, yes, Penny, if, um... Yes, if you think the guy is what we need, then um, you go ahead and appoint him, okay? Okay, you're the boss. <laughs> I'm sure it's just some sort of mistake. I'm sorry, love, I'm only doing my job. Well, can't you wait till I phone the shop? No, I'll just take the set now. No. Right, well, um, thanks very much then. Bye. Right then, Katie, two o'clock at the club on Friday, okay? Yeah. Jolly good. Well, I'll get the rest of these upstairs, shall I? Okay, uh, we'll just go down and get the others. Why did you say yeah? You wouldn't let me get a word in edgeways. Oh, oh, Lord! I'm terribly sorry. I'm clumsy on me. <laughs> Stupid on me. I'm terribly sorry about that. <sighs> David, what on earth are you doing? Oh, Audrey. <laughs> Hello. I uh, just had a bit of an accident, I'm afraid. I am. Um... <laughs> I think we can manage on our own now, Mr. Crosby. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry about all that. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Crosby. Yeah. I don't know, Major. You're always willing to help. Well, one good turn deserves another, you know. Just recruited young Katie Rogers as choreographer for the pantomime. She's at dance school, you know. How very enterprising. 
I was just coming round to see you, to see how the script's progressing. As musical director, I will want all the scores properly and professionally laid out. Actually, I have all that in hand, if you'd like to come back and have a look. Already? You are a dynamo, aren't you? <laughs> right. You know, maybe I should cancel this table thing and, uh... Go with Penny tonight and meet this guy. I'm sure Penny can manage to appoint a sous chef. Yeah, but if I want to stamp my authority on the place, maybe I should be there. Never heard of delegation, Max? I know. Don't but... be silly. I'm sure Penny can manage perfectly well. Yes, but <coughs> look, if we appoint him, I'd need to explain it to Barry. I thought you'd decided to start making decisions. Max! <laughs> Sam, hi. <laughs> Sorry if the sight of my knobbly knees alarms you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'll get over it. How are you, Sam? I'm fine, and you? Oh, fine. Oh, right, see you later. Uh, another of Santa's little helpers, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, this is Penny Crosby. She's, um, well, she's Patricia's aunt, I suppose. Well, they must be sisters. Oh, Sam, how corny can you get? I'm sorry, you know what I mean. Penny, this is Sam Martin. It's his turn to tow the sleigh. Right, let's get this thing hitched up. Right, see you again, Patricia. And you, Penny? Your secret's safe with me. Oh, good. Right. So, who is he exactly? Is he in the same line that Max seems to be? Oh, no. Sam's one of those lucky people who don't really need to work at all. You know, wealthy family. Oh, really? In fact, I think he's a bit of a black sheep. He's invested a lot of money in wine bars in Southport. Don't think that's really the dumb thing in his family. Mm. Anyway, why would you be interested in a friend of Max's? <laughs> who said I was? Oh, no, of course not. You've got Barry, haven't you? Do you know, I'm rather enjoying this writing bit. Always fancied myself as a bit of a Noel coward. I'm sure it'll be an absolute masterpiece, David. I'll go. We don't want to disturb the muse, do we? Oh, uh, is Mr. Crosby in? Um, oh, Rosie. Um, yeah, come in, come in. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all. Uh, Mrs. Manners and myself are just getting started on the script and music of our new Christmas extravaganza in aid of charity. Mm -hmm. Well, I've just bought a few more bits and pieces for all these new bike. Ah. Can't find anywhere to hide them in our place. Well, you know what lads are like. Quite. No problem. Just leave them with me and I'll put them with the bike later. Right, thanks. So, this panto, what is it again? Bing Crosby's Christmas Cracker. Oh. A real seasonal spectacular. Mm. A Christmas feast of delightful talent for the delectation of a discerning local audience. <laughs> you are. It's going to be very good. And for a good cause, too. <laughs> All proceeds to the Down Syndrome Association. Oh, right. Why don't you join us? We need all the volunteers we can get. Oh, well. How can you resist the glamour of show business, the bright lights, the applause? <sighs> well, not much good at singing or anything, but I think I could learn a few lines. Yeah, I'll join. Splendid, oh, splendid. I'm, I'm afraid we've got a full cast now, but... Yeah, well, um... there's a lot to do backstage. Oh, backstage. Well, what about painting some scenery? I'm sure you're a dab hand with a paintbrush. Don't suppose I'd mind doing that. Yeah, all right. Great. Welcome aboard. I could get our motor to come and help me, if that's all right. Oh, excellent. The more, the merrier. <sighs> so, I'll expect both of you at the club, two o'clock Friday shop. Oh, that's me day off. That's great. Fine, thanks, Mr Crosby. Right, I'll see you then. Right, thanks. See ya. Sure. Bye, Rosie. <sighs> Jello, I can feel it already. This show is going to be a big success. It'll draw the entire community together. Something we've always needed. And it'll be all thanks to you, David. And to you too, of course. Right, better get this slot sorted. Uh, get uh, supper started, you know. Jean will be home soon. Well, I'll leave you to it. But I must say how much I've enjoyed our afternoon together, working so closely with one common aim. Teamwork, Audrey. That's what it's all about. You're too modest. Wherever would we be without our glorious leader? <laughs> well, you know. One does what one can. You know, David, you and I, we're kindred spirits, as one. I feel I completely understand you, your thoughts, your aspirations, your problems. Problems? I've thought long and hard about you, David, ever since you decided to confide in me your concerns over... Well, it's um, a very delicate subject, but um, can I be frank? Yes, feel free. 
I think you're running away from your marital problems. You say certain aspects of yours and Mrs Crosby's relationship are ended, but I look at you and I see passion, fighting to get out. You do? Oh, yes. Fiery passion. You're a man's man. You have so much sensual power. So much to give, but it's all wasted. It is? Oh, yes. You admit that even your own wife won't face head-on this problem. But there isn't a problem. Even I, from this distance, can see that. Can you? Well, I must away and look forward to our next liaison. Yes, yes, of course, Audrey. Thank you, thank you, Audrey, for coming over and, um, well, for being so, uh, so supportive. My pleasure. And if ever you need to discuss anything further regarding the script, please feel free to call on me any time, night or day. My door is always open to you. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye, Audrey, and uh, thank you. Chantelle's. Mom, where's the telly? Oh, it's gone. It... Rachel, what have you done to your hair? N nothing. I've just had it done, that's all. Well, where do you find the money to pay for it? It must have cost a fortune. Well, Chantelle's mum did it. She's a hairdresser. How does she know? And she did for free, did she? Yeah, it's dead good. All my mates like it. Says it makes me look older. Do they? I don't know why the sudden urge to look older and in a few years' time be worried about not looking young enough. Mum, why has the telly gone? Well, you've not got rid of it because we can't afford it, have you? No, no, it's, uh, it's just a mistake at the shop. Um, we'll get it back soon. I thought you'd won all that money. I thought we'd get a new dead big one. Well, it won't be that long, love. <sighs> I'm going to my room. Right, and if you've got any football kit in there that needs washing, you better put it in the machine. Uh, no, it's just books and stuff. Right, uh... I'm going out for a while. OK. I, uh, I've got to try my hand at bingo again. You don't mind, do you? No. Oh, why should I? Right, well, I'll see you later, then. See ya. Oh, and, um... Oh, Rachel, your hair looks very nice. I, um, just wish you told me first, that's all. Oh, Penny! What a surprise. I just wondered if Max was in. Oh, you mean you didn't spot the reindeer parked outside? <laughs> just thought I'd let you know about the sous chef. Hello again. Sorry to barge in. Oh, don't worry about it. Work before pleasure, eh? Anyway, he seems just what we need, so I've taken him on. Starting on Monday. I hope oh. that's OK. Fine. <laughs> Penny's our expert at finding just the right staff. Would you fancy a coffee while you're here, Penny? Oh, if you're offering. So anyway, uh, what about this freelance work? Um, Sam. Oh, yes, right. Uh, well, I've sold my place in Churchtown, and I'm thinking of setting up in Liverpool. I've got this old Victorian building, and I need a surveyor to give it a once-over. You fancy taking the job on? I'm not looking for any favours when it comes to fees. Sounds good to me. Well, could you do this week? We could go down and look the place over together. I mean, your partner won't mind, will he? Well, if he was here to mind, uh, fortunately, he swanned off to Spain without letting me know. What, for good? Hopefully. What a surprise! Come in, come in. Thank you. I, I hope this isn't inconvenient. It's just that there's a few points on the script that no, I thought no, we could... No, no, um... of course not. Please, please go through. Huh. Lovely flat, isn't it? It is. I really like it. I wish you had me own place. There's no chance when you're on your own. Well, not unless you've got a job. Yeah. Best. You know, I've got a job. I found a flat. 
Would you be interested in sharing with me? Well, I could think of worse people to share with. No, I'm being serious. Well, I can't at the moment, can I? I've got to stay in London for a bit longer. Yeah, but if you could manage. Well, if I could manage, yeah, I'd love to share with you. That's not going to happen, though, is it? Not until I get a job. I don't know. All that hard work and getting a bloody degree. I can't even afford Christmas. Mm. Oh, there you go. Ray. Oh, you got to go on then, did you? Um, me and Jack, you're going to have an early night in our new flat, you know. Yeah, we were really knackered after today. Yeah, but there's a full couple of film on the half past. It's great, isn't it, Beth? How clever of you, Major. One of my favourites. Really? I've always loved this one. I'm constantly surprised by the things we have in common. Shall we sit here for the tea? It's nice to have a visitor. I do hope you don't mind my coming round like this. It's just that I wanted to make absolutely sure that the script and the music were just right. That's not the only reason you came, is it? <laughs> well, um, actually, after our little chat this afternoon, it got me thinking that, uh, you are right. I don't want to put apart the physical side of my marriage. Jean's quite happy to, but... You think it's her with the problem and not you, am I right? She thinks I'm making something out of nothing. She thinks our lives are full enough and we won't miss it. But you will. I can't come to terms with the thought that that part of my life is over forever. I'm... Well, it's just as though Jean's decided it for me before I've had a chance to prove that I'm still... capable. Sugar. Please. I was like that when George went. That side of our marriage was wonderful. Always was. And then one day, nothing. I was middle-aged, but it was still a loss. Yes. Yes, it's exactly how it feels, except that... Well, I'm still alive. It doesn't have to be like this, David. I know you have more to give. If Jean's decided that that side of things is over, how could it be unfaithful? And there's only one way to find out whether it's your problem or hers. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come round. I'm not going to pounce on you, David. I know, but... Think about it. You know why you came here tonight. We get on well together. I don't think it would be such a bad thing to do. I have to go now, Audrey, really. Think about what I said. It's the only way. Monday. Hi, nice to see you. You looking for me? Don't you think I'd come here otherwise? Well, let's keep it cool, shall we? Can I get you a drink? Orange juice. One orange juice, please, love. So, how's things? How are the girls? I'm not talking in front of everyone. Thanks, love. Well, uh, let's sit over there, shall we? and paid off everything I owe. I've had the television repossessed today. And we had an agreement. <sighs> it's not funny. I've had to lie to the girls. Why are you making everything so hard for me? You tricked me. You had no intention of paying off all my debts. You just... You conned me. No, I didn't. You just thought... If you went along with me, I'd wipe the whole slate clean. I like you. I want to be with you again. How long will it take? How many times? Hard to 
see. Tell me. Well, surely it wasn't all that bad. Why do you want to scrimp and save when you can take the easy option? I mean, however long it takes. Well, is our little arrangement back on there? Brookside, the magazine, is in the shops now, full of features and profiles of the cast. It'll cost you one ninety-five. You're going out, not if you're off school with a cold. I don't want to go out. Anyway, what are you looking at? Nothing. Enough. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Dad's just mixing me a traditional Crosby Christmas food. Oh, great. Listen, has anyone called? I found these parcels at the front door. There's some sort of donation for the round table. I don't know. Let's see, this one's got a name tag on it. Yeah. To Thomas, and uh, this is to Alice. Really? Oh. I think we'd better have a look inside. Mm. Probably from one of the neighbours. What? A 500 piece jigsaw for Alice. Far too old for her. <laughs> this is a chemistry set. It's too old for Thomas. These must have cost a fortune. I wonder who sent them. Oh. It's going to be years before they're old enough to play with these. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Max. Hey, lovely. It's <laughs> Santa Claus. Come in. <laughs> Look who I found on our doorstep. Come to see you. Oh. Uh, Audrey. Hello. Uh, this is my uh, daughter, Patricia, Hello. and her husband, Max. Hello. <laughs> you didn't tell me you had such a pretty daughter, Major. You've nearly finished your pudding, Major. It's almost time we left for the club. Well, I do have rather a lot to do with it yet. Are you making a Christmas pudding? Is there no end to your talents? <laughs> Mrs. Audrey Manners from the over 55s. She thinks the sun shines out of your father's. What's all this Major business? A little fib of your father, I think. Mm. Mum, do you know who sent all these? I did enjoy our little chat last night. Uh, I um, really shouldn't have come, you know. I've thought of nothing else since. I think we're becoming closer, don't you? David, do you know anything about these parcels? Not a thing. It's a total mystery to me. Oh, don't give us that innocent look, Dad. I bet you sent them. Honestly, Patsy, I didn't. That's weird. Weird. But are you ready to leave? You can't be late for your own planning meeting. I think the Major and I have got the script and the music just about perfect. Ah, uh, well, look, Audrey, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give them this today because um, I did promise Patsy I'd finish the pudding. Oh, don't be silly, Dad. I can finish it. We can't have a meeting without our inspiration. And don't think you can dump all the hard work on Audrey and I. <sighs> Mom, see these caterpillar boots? No, I'm sorry, Rachel. Oh, well, it's Christmas soon, and I need some new stuff. Oh, see, they're only four twenty-five a week. Yeah, for twenty weeks, that's that's nearly a hundred pounds. But you've paid all your bills off when you went on the bingo. Oh, look, I'm sorry. It'll have to be something cheaper. Oh, can I have a 
new pair of footy boots then? I know where I can get some for only £35. No! Rachel, I can't afford it. Hey, mind your backs. Hey, is that for us? It certainly is, sweetheart. I'll plug it in now. Oh, just give me a minute. It's OK, I can do it. <sighs> Didn't think she'd last very long without a telly. Did you buy it for us? No, Mr Maguire sorted it out with the telly people, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, Rachel. Even managed to get a better one. <sighs> Any chance of a coffee? Well, what do you think of the telly, then? You shouldn't have brought it. It's only on approval, you know. It's like a bonus. Now our arrangement's back on. Rachel's in the house. I don't know how she's going to be off sick. Yeah, well, uh, I thought about that. Meet me in the pub tomorrow, one o'clock. Um, we can go to a mate's place. Then what am I going to tell the girls? Oh, you'll think of something. Remember, you did agree to meet me again. Yes! Is it OK, sweetheart? Oh, yeah, thanks, Mr Maguire. Oh, call me Kenny. Uncle Kenny, if you like. All right, Bing. Hey, good turnout. What did I tell you? I'm ready to exchange contracts on my house. Sorry? I'm almost there on the house for me and Mandy. Oh, yes. Well done, Sinbad. I'll make a nice Christmas present for her. Hey, it's going to be brilliant. The best crimbo ever. Years I've had to scrape together a few bob for crimbo, and now money's no object. I still can't believe it, you know. Can you tell me when we're going to start organising these rehearsals? Well, as soon as possible, I hope. Excuse me a minute. Rehearsals? What rehearsals? Well, our club's putting on a Christmas panto. What, in here? It's a bit small, isn't it? No, 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 it'll be in the church hall. It's for charity, so I hope you'll come along and support us. Oh, oh yeah, well, put me down for a few tickets. I'll take Mandy and the girls. Which one are you doing? It's a new one, actually. Um, Bing Crosby's Christmas Cracker. <laughs> Bing's Christmas Cracker, eh? I like it. Yes, it does have rather a ring to it, don't you think? You could get involved, if you like. Oh, yes. We need backstage people. Um, Fit young men for scene shifting? Well, if I see any, I'll let you know, won't I? <laughs> All proceeds are for the Down Syndrome Association. You know children like our little Alice. Yeah, little Alice. Yeah, OK, I'll do it. Well, you don't want me now, do you? Cos I am on me dinner break, so... First rehearsal, Friday here, two o'clock sharp. Good I'll man. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll uh, break a leg. OK. <laughs> Major, I really do need to go over these scores with you. Ah, well, I do have to have a word with Mr Brennan about his lines. No, 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 you talk to Audrey. Uh, no, Jean, I really think I must talk him through his part, you yeah. know. Manage, you stay here. Audrey's needs are obviously greater. So, um, what can I do for you, Audrey? I can't stop thinking about us. I lay awake all night, tossing and turning, thinking about you. When are you coming to see me again? Well, look, I really don't think I can with all this going on. You have nothing to worry about. Didn't you think about what I said? Yes, but... We work together, David. I can feel it in here. We could have such a beautiful relationship. No fear, no guilt, no retribution. I know you want to prove something to yourself, so why not prove to me that you're a man? Yes, but if Jean finds out... She won't. How could she? We were fated to meet like this. I feel like Celia Johnson in Brief Encounter, and you're my Trevor Howard. Oh, really, Audrey? You won't regret it, David. And if you don't try, you'll never find out the truth. You'll be banished to a loveless, sexless life forever. Well, um, as long as everything's, you know, discreet. Shall we say 7.30? I haven't seen her since last week. She's at the new house. Oh, well, it's that bad, eh? Right, uh, well, I'd better get off, mate. I'll see you later. See you soon. Sit down. Hello, Mick. All right. Can we talk? Talk? I mean, properly. I got the job in Glasgow. Congratulations. Why can't you be happy for me? It's the kind of job I've wanted for years. Assistant head of personnel, a really go-ahead company, a bigger salary than I've ever had. Because it'll split us up. Well, God almighty, this trial's going to be bad enough and you want to go and live in bloody Glasgow. We can all go and live in Glasgow. <sighs> With me banged up in Walton Jail. Be a bit far for visiting, won't it? You didn't do it. You've told me and I believe you. <sighs> oh, well, now I've just got the problem of the judge, the juries and whatever the coppers have got on me. For God's sake, Marianne, look at me. I'm black. What chance will I have? 
If you didn't do it, then you'll be acquitted. Oh, get real, will you? It happens. You know, I could get put away for ten years or more for something I never did. And what's going to happen to me, kids? I mean, you made it obvious you can't cope with them. But maybe I could. If they came to Glasgow, I've told you the salary's bigger. We could get a nanny, someone to live in. I don't want to lose you. Then why go to Glasgow? But we're closed. I want to take the job to help us. I mean, what am I doing at the moment? Nothing. We can't afford the mortgage. If I get a place together up there, I should be able to take the kids. Whatever happens, I can take the kids and build something for our future. It wouldn't work. But how do you know until we've tried? I just know. You've said you don't want to be a single parent. They're not your kids. Why won't you even let me try? Why does everything have to be on your terms? Just go away, will you? We're shut. Right, upstairs. We can talk here. This isn't talking. You're like a brick wall. I want to know why you can't accept my job in Glasgow. Come on, I want to know why. Why do I have to choose between you and the job? Why won't you compromise? I mean, why do I have to choose one or the other? <sighs> so, um, this exchange in a contract, what do I have to do? Well, you just sign your name on a couple of documents. Is that all? Well, it would be a good idea to read them first. We know the people that are selling the house, the Shackletons. Will they be there? I think that's about it for signing contracts, Sinbad. No, well, come on, Max. I've got to know, haven't I? I mean, this is a big thing for me. Hello, Mrs. Jordash. Oh, uh, hi. Hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. <laughs> well, I better get going. Um, I'm Santa tonight for the round table. Oh, right. Oh, and there, uh, this, uh, is that all? Uh, yes, yeah. definitely. <clears throat> what are you looking so pleased about? I don't know. Well, not really. What was all that with Mr. Farnham? Oh, that's a secret to do with your crazy pleasure. Hey, look, there's no need. I can't afford to buy you one. I'm not expecting anything, you know. I mean, you don't give to receive, do you? No, but you've been so good to us. It's not right if I can't repay you. Yeah, we'll have another bingo win, and then you can do, can't you? How did you get on last night? Sorry? Well, when I went round to yours, your Rachel said you'd gone to bingo. You're not getting hooked on it, are you? <laughs> don't be silly. Rachel didn't say. Oh, so no jackpot, then? No, um, I, uh, I suppose it must have been beginner's luck the uh, first time. Um, look, give, give us a clue about this uh, Christmas present. No way. Is it a meal out at Mr. Farnham's new restaurant? You're cold. Well, I could get Beth to check the bookings. Is it something to do with Mr. Farnham? Ah, uh, you're freezing. Oh, well, I'll have to wait then. Uh, there was one thing I meant to ask you. Uh, I was thinking of popping into town tomorrow to pick up a crazy plenty for me, Mum. I know it's too late to send it to Australia, but I wondered if you fancy coming with me. Tomorrow? Yeah, well, you're not working, are you? No, I am. Um... Oh, sorry, I have to go to the dentist. The dentist, he never said. Well, maybe another day, eh? Why can't you find another job? Something round here. You know, I've tried. And anyway, why should I? I've found what I want, what I've wanted for years. Just can't agree on anything, can we? We're miles and miles apart. So what are we going to do? For a start, we'd better put the house back on the market. After everything we did to buy it. <laughs> well, if you're in Glasgow and I'm here or in the Nick, who's going to live in it? Who's going to pay the mortgage? Is this some sort of blackmail to make me give up the job in Glasgow? Well, if that's what you plan to do, it's obvious you want us to split up. I don't know. Well, it certainly looks that way to me. Maybe. Or maybe we don't love each other enough. Is that it? You said it, Mick. Well, we could, but Patricia and I thought they'd be better donated to charity. They might make good raffle prizes for the panther, you know, something for the interval. Oh, it's very kind of you. Mm. Oh, oh. very smart, David. Are you going out? I thought you were going to do some more work on your script. I seem to have a touch of writer's block. 
rather fancy a quick drink. Oh, well, why don't you come out with me and the table, lads? We're having a few pints later. Good idea, Max. Give him a break from the pressures of showbiz. Oh, thank you, Max, but uh, I thought I'd just pop down to the Legion and have a quick one with Ray and the lads. Oh, all right. Oh, I'll give you a lift. I've got to pop in at the restaurant. Uh, no, 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 I I'm fine. I I'll walk if it's all the same to you, but uh, thanks for the offer. Right. Oh, well, um, have a nice evening. <laughs> Bye. 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 Are you sure you're all right? You look a bit tense. Well, um, th there is something bothering me, as a matter of fact. Yeah? I uh, wondered if, if I stayed at home this evening and we, um, we had a quiet night. I, I wondered if we could... Oh, I thought we'd agreed on that subject. Surely you've got enough to fill your life at the moment without worrying about our sex life. But, Jean... Surely there are times when you miss it. Honestly, David, I am quite happy. My life is certainly full. Go on, off you go to the Legion and enjoy yourself. Right then. Well, I could come with you if you like. No, no, you can't. Um, it's a snooker tournament, uh, men only, I'm afraid. Oh, all right, well, go and have a good time. Thanks. Oh, well, I won't wait up for you. All right, all right. All right, Jack. Um, what's all this? It's a bit of a housewarming symbol, busy from me and Beth. Now, watch out, watch out. Hi. Oh. Oh, what's that for? Well, it's shame you had to let me scab a free one of them. Are we going to get one of those silver false ones? Yeah, right, the ones that don't spill green crap all over the place. I don't suppose you're going to moan if you have some free air. It was. And you get a free concert oh, yeah. as well. Oh, well, I can't wait. Jack, can you use your bag? Yeah, make yourself at home, you usually do. Will you plug that in for us, Beth? Yeah, of course. Um, oops. Do you always let your boyfriends bash you about like that? And who says you're my boyfriend? I mean, you're all seeing him, aren't you? Well, I see quite a lot of him, yeah. Then, you see him, aren't you? If you say so. Right. Any requests? Oh, you're going to leave it up to me. Eh, uh, yeah. Can you sing far away? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad you came back. In fact, I knew you'd come. Like I said today, it was fate brought us together. Kismet. Quiet. Do you think so? Yeah. It's so nice to have a male friend I can really talk to. One who shares my interests. Most of the men at the club don't have your refined background. Your sense of the good things in life. I've always thought of myself as a pretty ordinary sort of bloke. Far from it. You have manners, charm, a sense of how to behave. Really, Audrey? You'll get me swollen and headed, you know. I mean it. I can't believe how lucky I am to find a friend like you. Honestly. Yes, I suppose we do get on pretty well together, don't we? From the first moment we met. I'm going upstairs now. If you'd like to follow. What's up? Have you seen the time? My Gemma can't get to sleep because of all the noise you're making. I'm not having my kids kept awake night after night just because you lot have moved in. Sorry, mate. Yeah, well, thanks. Good night. Oh, Grace, just what we need, eh? A complaint the minute we move in. Oh, Mick's all right, he's sound. Hey, you wouldn't be so laid back if it was yours and Beth's flat. Are you two gonna get one when you get a job, mate? Um, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it much, have we? Well, you won't want to carry on living at home if you're still going with each other, will you? 
You know what your mum's like. Uh, we're just mates, that's all. Will you tell them, Beth? Yeah, that's right. We're only mates. Hello, you're early. Yes. I expected you to be out half the night playing cards with Ray and Co. <laughs> Wasn't in the mood. Oh, we must both be getting old. I was going to put up the Christmas decorations and I wasn't in the mood. No, oh, Christmas decorations, mm. yes. I suppose we are a bit behind the rest of them. Uh, I'll put them up. Oh, yes, please, if you're not too busy tomorrow. No, no, now. Now? Oh, no time like the present, and uh, if it's one less job for you to do. Oh, what can I say? I usually have to twist your arm over Christmas arrangements. <laughs> Thank you. What was that for? For being a wonderful husband. I'll go make you a nice hot drink. It was a dark, dank, cold and windy night on Beachside Parade, where the ghosts of a woman and baby still walk. Oh, knock it off, will you, Mike? Oh, you remember when Teddy Sullivan's wife and kid were murdered? It was here, up on the scaffold, when they were building the shops. When was that? I don't know. Three years ago, the fellow who did it was killed himself. I wonder if they do haunt this block of shops. Stop it, Mike. You're giving me the creeps. I wonder if that Simon Howe bloke haunts the woods. Hey, you know Katie doesn't want to talk about him. Back in. I'm sorry, Katie. It makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? How many bodies are buried in the woods? I don't know what happened there before they built this block of shops. What are you doing? I don't think the girls want to hear about things like that. Well, I'm just saying. You never know what happens to all these people who go missing. There's probably bodies buried all over the country and nobody will ever know about it. Michael, shut up! All right, OK, I'm sorry. Oh, what? Well, I think I'll go to bed. Well, look, Jackie, is it OK if I stay here tonight? Well, um. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Oh, why are you doing it around the corner? I just don't fancy walking back. All this stupid talk. See, you're frightened now, haven't you? It's frightened me, that's for sure. Do you mind? No, no, you're all right. Me and Casey will share. You can have my room. Thanks. Well, if I've got no one to walk home, I might as well stay tonight as well. Yeah, well, I'll put the quilt on the settee for you. No, it's all right. We can share, can't we? I'll just nip to the loo. It just made day. This is the last time, Michael. I'm not having you in here using this Jackie, place for... we're just mates, that's all. Honest. I had a look at the decorations while you were in the bathroom. They're lovely. like that that make me love you. <laughs> David. Yes? Uh, you know what we were talking about earlier, before we went out? We could try if you like. No, no, Jean. It's all right. You, you were right, you know. Best if we leave it, I think. All right. I know. Gotcha. Is it dead? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's disgusting. I hate moths in the bedroom. I really scared you before. Yeah, a bit. I can't believe all that stuff would frighten you. Well, only sometimes. I just don't like talking about things like that. You sure you don't mind me getting in with you? No, of course not. It's cool. You sure? Mike, it's no problem. We both know each other's situation, so it's no problem. It's not like you fancy me, is it? Are you sure you're not bothered? Oh, no! <laughs> I'm gonna blow those candles out. Oh. <laughs> and wash my legs. You know, you're supposed to make a wish when you blow out a candle. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And did you make one? <laughs> no, there's no point. 
Why? I'm not into all that stuff. Oh, well. Night, Mike. Good night. Brookside the magazine is in the shops now, complete with features and profiles of the cast. It'll cost you $1.95. Exactly is today, Mick. Oh, that's some plea and fixed thing or something. You should know all about. Oh, yeah. We're down the Crown Court, eh? Yeah. Next time I'm down there, I'll probably be leaving in some prison van. On the way to ten years in Walton, at least. Oh, come on, Mick. Book up a bit, eh? It's easy for you to say. You're off to a new life in North Wales soon. I've got to take this while some bloody scumbag out there laughing at me. Yeah, I know. He's off scot-free and my life's in ruins. Or soon will be. I haven't even got Marianne to stand by me. What, it's all over between you two because of this lot? This robbery thing? Ah, it's a long story, Greg. All I know is I'm on my own. Finished. All for something I never done. See you later. Yeah. Oh, the wanderer returns. Yeah, I'm sorry about last night. Yeah, you could have phoned. Yeah, well, I was with Mike at his sister's new flat. If they had a phone, I'd have called you. The mic stay? Yeah, what if it did? Just wondered. Excuse me. Where are you going? Are you going out? I, uh, just thought I'd go and do some Christmas shopping. Oh, I dressed like that. Oh, what's wrong? Well, it's just a bit OTT for going shopping, isn't it? It's like a madhouse in town. I don't see why I can't get dressed up once in a while. Anyway, I like Christmas shopping. Mum, I know you won the bingo and everything, but it doesn't mean we can take things easy, you know. I mean, we still haven't got enough money to manage properly. Don't worry, I won't be going mad. Yeah, I know, but have we sorted everything out? I mean, have we paid all the bills off? And what about the TV? Have you sorted that out? I, um. I had to write to them. It might take a couple of days yet. Uh, Mr. Maguire doesn't mind us hanging on to that one in the meantime. Well, why do we have to borrow one from him anyway? He offered. I didn't ask. Yeah, but why? And wh why does he keep coming around here when we've paid him off? Oh, he's just a considerate sort of man, that's all. Mum, he's a creep. I better go. Mum? <sighs> Look, I don't want you to buy me anything for Christmas this year, OK? You've got to have something. Don't be silly. No, I don't want anything. I'm going to have a word with Rachel and say that until we get things sorted out financially, Christmas is off this year. <sighs> don't you say a word to Rachel. I don't want to worry. Where is she anyway? She's gone back to school. Uh, I'll let her go around to Gary's for a couple of hours. I don't want you saying anything to Rachel. Do you hear me? OK. All right, bye. Everybody at the same time. Yes, yes, of course I did. Hey, Dave, what do you think? Uh, that's fine. Wonderful, wonderful. 
What are you doing, Dave? No, that'll do for now, Beverly. Thank you. You see, we do have a running order to keep to. So when are we going to starve, then? I mean, I've got a baby to pick up from Arlins. Have patience, Beverly. There's hardly anyone here yet. And Audrey hasn't turned out. Do you think you should phone her? Uh, well, I... Well, I need her on keyboard to have any sort of rehearsal, and it's not like her to be late. You two haven't fallen out or anything, have you? No, 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 of course not. We just have to hang on until she turns up. Oh, talk of the devils. Major, Mrs Crosby, I'm so sorry I'm late. I wanted to nip into town for some more music, but the crowds, it's impossible. Never mind, you're here now. It is more than I can say for some of the others. I'm so sorry, David. No problem, really, but we ought to get on. Well, I'd like to start with the dance routine, but what can I do without Katie Rogers? I'll go and chase her up, see what's keeping her. <laughs> she did promise to be here. Don't be silly, David. The producer doesn't do the legwork. Talk to your musical director. Uh, it's no trouble. I'll go and see her. Uh, not now, Jean. You've got lots of other things to do. It won't take a moment, and Audrey needs you. Uh, Jean, I do need you here. Oh, do stop fussing, David. I'm sure Audrey will be able to help you. Um, look, I need to have another word with Mr. Brennan. Anybody think you didn't want to be left alone with me, David? <laughs> um, Audrey, look, um, about last night. I I'm sorry. I'm not. But I wish you hadn't left so quickly. Look, do you think you could just possibly forget about the whole thing? Far from it, darling. I think we could go places together, reach the heights. The sky is the limit. When can I expect another visit? Audrey, but I... Can't you tell when a girl's smitten? Audrey, really? Eh, uh, can you come and have a look what I've done now, Mr Crosby? Yes, Mrs Banks, right away. I really do need to talk about this music, Major. Uh, what do you think? Excellent. Very good. Do you really think so? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to wait for your choreographer, Audrey. She's been delayed. Oh, that's all right, Mrs Crosby. I'll just set up and go through the scores while I'm waiting. As we're all working together, couldn't you call me Jean? Oh, if you're sure you don't mind. Of course not. Oh, what happened to Katie? Oh, she says she's sorry and she'll be about an hour. Oh, Lord. Well, surely you've got plenty to discuss with Audrey while you're waiting. I'll just, um, set up my keyboard. Do you know... I can't think why I didn't like her when we first met. She's really quite nice, isn't she? She sort of grows on you. I'm not sure. I find her a bit overbearing. In fact, I was wondering if we couldn't somehow contrive to, um, ease her out. What on earth for? Well, does she really fit in here? It's obvious you and her have never seen eye to eye. It's all in the past and she fits in perfectly well. Besides, she's a very good pianist. Actually, she's really rather nice. In fact, I was thinking of inviting her round for tea over Christmas. I can't hide anymore. I'm going to drop them. Lee, you have a go. No, I said I didn't want to. Anyway, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't like bunking off school. Just do it. Don't leave it all up to us. All right, dash it. Someone will see. Have a go. I'm scared. John, no, have a go. Go on, just slip it in your jacket. Be cool, Leo. You can do it. Just dash it quick. Let's shoot. Come on, John, just be cool. More lambs to the slaughter. All positions to main exit. Sit down, Leo. We'll have everyone clock on there. <sighs> hey, Jono, you did it. Well impressed, mate. Excuse me, you three. I think we need to have a little chat. Let's go back into the store. What for? Which one us for? Well, we haven't done anything. Where's the other boy? It's just us. Have you got something you haven't paid for? Yeah. Come on. Inside. Right, Pen, I'm off. Um, 
You don't mind, do you? I mean, I, I did promise Sam I'd look over this building for him. You're the boss. You don't have to ask me. <laughs> you uh, heard from Barry? Not even a postcard. Oh. Well, if he gets in touch, you might like to tell him that um, I've changed our butchery suppliers. Jim Hegarty is now off the payroll, and I've found a new man from the world. But I thought Hegarty was one of Barry's old mates. Well, casualty of good business practice, that's what I say. I mean, um, old mate or not, he wasn't very reliable with deliveries. And, you know, this new man, he has a better variety of meats, gaming seas and continental cuts. Mm. Oh, and I phoned your new sous chef as well. He and I are going to look a little more closely at our fruit and veg man as well. This new room certainly sweeps clean, doesn't he? Well, I'd like to think so. Right, I'll see you later. Oh, Max, um, I thought you might like to invite Sam back for coffee and sandwiches. If that's the permissible expense from petty cash. Permission granted. <laughs> bye bye. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. <laughs> They're not exactly the folly berger, are they? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> All right, ladies, take five times D. He gave me two more songs, then I could do one there, and then one here, on page 31. Ah, yes, but it would mean changing the plot quite a bit. Mr Crosby, uh, do you think I should do this bit here? Red or green? Oh, well, I think green would be rather nice. Hi, green it is. Well, I mean, can I have me two songs? I thought I could do something a bit solely. Solely? Boss. I pleaded not guilty. The trial comes up in the new year. Oh, right. Do you want a coffee? Or shall I nip out and get some cans? I don't want anything, Greg. Just mind the shopping. Right. Oh, why? Everything was open, so I came straight up. What do you want? The engagement ring. I didn't think it was fair to keep it. So that's it then. Look, you know I can't go to Glasgow, even at the trial hanging over me. Sorry, Mick. I'm still taking the job. Hello. Yes, speaking. Who? You what? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll be down there straight away. What's the matter? It's Leo. Him and Gary have been caught shoplifting or something in town. What? Look, I've got to get over there. Greg! Here, take my car. I'll go and pick Gemma up from school. Thanks. Greg! I thought we could try and organise what else needs to be painted before we go. Yeah, that's fine. You've made an excellent start. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Rosie! Rose! Excuse me if you don't mind, David. Jean. Eddie, I'm busy. Just come over here a minute, will you? Well, I think that's that for today. Shoplifting. Oh, Lee! He said, I don't believe this. Oh, come on, we'll have to get down there. Oh, God. Come on. Well, keep trying, if you would. Have you any more ideas where your mother might be? Not if she's not at home or work. Can't you tell us what's going to happen? Well, we've called the police and we've got a video of all four children leaving the shop with goods they haven't paid for. It's not our decision on whether they're brought to court, but the store's policy is always to push for shoplifters to be prosecuted. Oh, God, Lee, why did you do it? Why, Lee? Why did you go steal it? I don't know. Well, it's obvious my lad was influenced by these older ones. I hope you're not blaming Ollie. That's enough, Rose. We don't want to be arguing between ourselves. Now, come on, Lee. 
Why did you do it? If we could just wait until the police are here, please, sir. Yeah, well, he's my lad and I want to know why. Is this the first time you've done it? Come on, Neil, tell us. Lee. Come on, lad, have you done it before? Look, you're in enough trouble already, so you might as well tell me. We've been a few times. I'm sorry, Mum. What happened to the stuff you pinched? Come on, Neil, tell us. You gonna tell me, Gay? You don't have to say anything if you don't want to, so. Never mind all that. I mean, they should tell us everything they can. I'm still waiting, Lee. Look, you've got to tell us. You'll be in worse trouble if you don't, son. We either sold it or gave it away. Have you taken other things from this store? And what happened to that? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Of course you know what happened to it. Now, come on! Do you know something about this, Rachel? We hid it at mine. Is it still there? Where? We buried it in the back garden. Look, um, what if they gave you the stuff back? Wouldn't that, you know, uh, be in their favour, like, especially if us parents made sure there'd be no more thieving? I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to discuss that with the police. It's always company policy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's always company policy to prosecute. Uh, can I have a private word, please, officer? What a shamble. I hope we can have a more constructive rehearsal next time. David, can you manage to get that home on your own? Only I must look in at the florist. Yes, I'll be fine, thanks. Uh, bye, Audrey. Don't you need a hand, Major? No, 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 I'm fine. Well, thanks for coming, Audrey. I'm sorry we didn't get much done. Oh, I enjoyed it. it. It wasn't too bad, was it, Major? No, not too bad at all. Bye. Well, I must fly. Bye. Bye, Jean. Uh, David! David, we haven't arranged a time for our next meeting. Our dangerous liaison. I'm sorry, Audrey, I can't. I realise now I made a terrible mistake. I, I can't do this to Jean. So it's all right to use me, to treat me as an object you can prove yourself with. It wasn't like that at all. I feel so humiliated, used and cast aside. But you encouraged me. You would leave me alone. You came to my house the other night. I didn't invite you. All I offered you was my sympathy. I know, and I regret it, Audrey. I really, really do. But I hate deceiving Jean. I love her. If she knew... But she doesn't know. I want you to come round to my house again. I want to spend some time with you. No, Audrey, I can't. I'd hate to have to hurt Jean. Surely you wouldn't. Let's just say I'll expect you when it's convenient. But no later than next week. Cheerio, Major. What you get caught for, eh? You're a pillock, what are you? Hey! Look, 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 it's not a question of them getting caught. It's why they did it in the first place. That's what's important. Yeah, we'll do it again and I'll knock your bloody head off, all right? Oh, yeah? You've got a cheek. You've been in jail for thieving. You've been thieving all your life. Where do you think I get it from? Oh, hey, you... Come on, that's enough. And I don't know what to say to you. I didn't bring you up to steal. What were you playing at? Sorry, Dad. You're sorry? Is that all you've got to say after what you've done? Well, you've let me down and our Gemma. You've let everybody down. Mick, it wasn't his fault. He was just following us. Look, he knows the difference between right and wrong. At least I thought he did. He was with children a lot older than himself. You just went along with it, didn't you, Leo? Don't want to go to prison, Dad. Well, we'll have to see about that, won't we? Can't treat him like that. Look, go and get some clean clothes on and get a wash. We've got to go over to Rachel's to meet the police. I really don't think you should be so hard on him. Hey, look, you stay out of this. You're not part of my family anymore. <laughs> So, what do you think? Very nice. I might even book a table. <laughs> oh, hello again, Sam. Hi. So, how did the survey go? Ah, Max is holding out to give me a written report. Well, I'll let you have it verbally. It costs the same. I think I know what you're going to say, so come on, shoot. <sighs> Put it in a nutshell, the building looks good, but costs you a lot more than the purchase price to get it to standard as a wine bar. Hmm, I guess right. Pity, it's got a lot of character. I can let you have a full detailed report on paper. No, I'll just have to go on looking. Can't spend all my cash on jazz records and hunters. Hunters? A daft thing of mine. I've got two chestnuts and a couple of bays. 
Oh, and a national hunt racer that should have been called Back Marker. <laughs> I always fancied a horse myself. A passion I picked up from my ex. Do you ride? Oh, I used to, but I suppose I'd be a little rusty now. You'd soon get back into it. Perhaps you could come to my place sometime. With Max and Patricia. We could hack out over the moss one afternoon. Hmm, I might just keep you to that. You heard anything from Barry? No. Is he still AWOL in sunny Spain? Not a word. Can't you reduce his role a little, make him a sleeping partner? Well, that's what I'm going to put to him when he gets back, but God knows how he'll react. If you're my sidekick, I'd, I'd buy him out. <laughs> if I had the money, I would, but uh, no such luck. In the meantime, I'm taking advantage of his absence by making a few changes round here. Hmm, good for you. Can I use your phone? Mm. I just want to put that estate agent out of his misery. Sure. Yeah, you're definitely not chancing. No. I'll find something else. Yeah. Won't be a minute. You uh, thinking what I'm thinking? Asking Sam to buy Barry out. Exactly. I mean, it's nothing to do with me. Uh, aggressive takeover. But that's it. He's a friend. Uh, he's cut lots of money. Mm. So what do you think? Oh, you're the boss. And it doesn't look as if Barry's in any hurry to come home. I could kill you for this. What are you doing shoplifting? I'm sorry. I don't believe this, Rachel. I, I think Rachel should go upstairs for the moment. Yeah, go on, get upstairs. Now! Mum's gonna go absolutely mad. She doesn't need this, Rachel. Look, love, I've talked to the police and they've said they'll probably just give her a caution sometime next week. So she ought to go to court, then? The kids don't know this, so perhaps it's better if we keep them sweating for a bit, teach them a lesson. Oh, my God, for that. But the shop wants the stuff back that they've already stolen, and it's hidden here. Here? The police are on the way now to get it. Well, why? Where is it? Have you got a spade, love? What for? You want to move your business into Liverpool, then why not do it gradually? Buying Barry Grant out wouldn't cost a third of the asking price on that building we saw. I'd just like you to consider it, that's all. I mean, I'd sooner go into business with someone like yourself than our absent friend. OK, I'll think about it. Great. I don't think you've been making a mistake, Sam. We'll have to wait and see. Well, anything you want to look at, you just give me and Penny a ring. I mean, if you want to see the books, you can. Please Slow yourself. down, Max. I'll be in touch. Nice to see you again, Penny. Bye. Uh, yes! I do hope he decides to make a bid. Oh. Do I detect a little, um, ulterior motive here? What are you suggesting? That I want to teach Barry a lesson this morning after Spain? Oh, no, 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 not exactly, but, um, well, you and Sam seem to get on very well. You as a partner, you'd see more of him, wouldn't you? Now, why would I want to do that? the gear. Be knackered down there in the wet. Sir? Rachel, what's happening? What are the police doing here? Hey, oh, hey. Mom. Oh, well, it's all right. She's only fainted. Get a chair, somebody. Yes, it's all right. She's OK. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry I knew this would happen. I'm so sorry. Mom, I didn't mean to do it. Listen, told them listen. Rachel's been caught shoplifting. She's been stealing and buried the stuff in the patio. I'm sorry, Mum. I'll never do it again. I promise. Well, I... just shut up, you. You caught stealing. I don't believe this. Where have you been? The police have been trying to get in touch with you all afternoon. Nowhere. Well, where's nowhere? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Brookside Magazine with features and profiles on the cast, priced £1.95, is in the shops now. Well, over on ITV next, peak practice. Here on 4, there's comedy after the break, as it all goes horribly wrong for Ellen. <laughs>